Well, we're working on the frontispiece of an illustration today for a book. It's a chapter book, uh, a black and white chapter book. And a frontispiece is the front illustration that you see when you open the book up, uh, usually before the um, story starts. And sometimes it has a dedication on it, but in this case, it's just a frontispiece. I'm working off of a sketch and some photo references that I've done. Um, this story is about uh, scary stories from the school. Uh, in fact, the name of the book is The School of Scary Stories. And um, I am going to try to use an old-fashioned desk as a reference point. Um, old-fashioned desks way before my time. Um, but the author needed a, for the cover, he wanted an old schoolhouse with vines and uh, kind of set in a cemetery, kind of a creepy look with the moon in the background, and I thought an old schoolhouse would not have new school desks, so we're going to do an old style school desk. Um, I have approved this sketch that I'm working from here with the publisher just a few minutes ago and they said go for it um, and usually that's a good sign I will do a rough pencil sketch first and lay in the rest with some and some charcoal. Um, the author has picked the size of the book, so I'm kind of limited as to what size I can make things. Um, he, he wanted a black and white book, and um, this is the second time working with this author, um, so I'm real comfortable with how his style goes. Um, He's comfortable with how things look on my end, so we've got a good working relationship. Um, the publisher, I've worked with her as well, so I think we're in good shape. Um, I will, once I'm done here, we'll send this in, and uh, I'll make the book out of it. going to ink in with these old-fashioned dip pens, dip quill pens, uh, the lines I just drew, and pray that we don't spill all over it. Um, with this technique, you get one shot, and if that shot is a smear or a blur, you get to start over. It's an old technique um, handed down many, many years, and I like it. I like these. You can do uh, a lot better line quality, and line quality is important in this job because they don't want a real straight, um, boring line. They want some lines with character and a little bit of edginess to them. That's kind of important, and that's why I chose the dip pen. A lot of thicks and thins in the line. Um, and it's good, good stuff. Um, Is there any computer drawing that you could do that could come close to this? Um, you can. Um, for me, I, I learned on this stuff, and I'm sure uh, somebody who learned on computer could probably do something close to it. You can do a lot with computer. Uh, in fact, if if I do mess it up or if I do smear it or you know something small I'll scan it off and go back and fix it with the computer um, so all would not be lost but um, it's real hard to get to get the same quality um, with a real pen and ink a real oil brush a real um, watercolor I mean you can you can do it on a computer but it's going to look like it's been done on the computer and for the story that we're doing here, 
they're very warm stories. They're very um, they're fun stories. And I think hand doing it makes it look a little bit better anyway. Very important when you do this kind of thing that you keep. It's not just what you want as an artist, but it's what the client wants. Because you can do the coolest picture in the world, and if the person who's paying for it doesn't like it, then it's kind of pointless. So we did a lot of talking with the author and the publisher about what he wants for this, um, and uh, I think he'll like it. We'll know it when we show it to him anyway. <laughs> if he doesn't, we'll, we'll do it again. That's part of it. can't stop being an artist and then and then turn it back on it's something that you got to you got to do 24/7 and um, hopefully you get something that looks good when you're all done but some people may not like it but um, it generally works About to put the finishing touches on the inking portion of this. Um, add some, some minor things here, some mist, make it look spooky. Um, and then when I get that done, I will add uh, a wash behind that and then probably add some charcoal uh, to dust it in so it looks something along the lines of these other pieces in the story here. Um, the washes and the charcoal will give it the darks that it needs to hold it all together. Um, and the pen and ink just kind of just kind of the framework for everything. Um, I'm trying to debate whether I want to put the moon in. In my original sketch, I had a moon, and up to this very minute, I don't know if I want to put the moon. It, it doesn't make much sense to have a desk outside where a moon would be, but then again, you've got vines and leaves and wind, so I'll probably put the moon in. Moons are spooky, especially crescent moons. Um, and then I'll have to let it dry and touch it up. Now here's the part I don't want to mess up. The moon will probably be the first thing you look at when you see this drawing. should put some bats in. No, we'll put any bats in. I think that's it. Let it dry and see what happens.